Hello, it's Martin with my VW ID3, which, as you probably know, supports over the air software updates, just like your phone does, at least in theory. VW didn't make it that simple. There are a few things you need to jump through and configure, but that's what this video is all about, so you know how to get your ID3 ready for over the air updates, which have now started rolling out in the UK without going to a Volkswagen garage. To understand why this is such a big deal, we need to zoom out a little bit. And remember, when the ID3 started production, the cars were actually sitting in parking lots with unfinished software waiting for that to be flashed before they get delivered to customers. Now, that has happened, but the software was still far from finished. There were some key features missing. And VW promised that these would be delivered in the form of over-the-air updates. Now, those updates started trickling out, but they also started bricking VW ID3s and ID4s later on. So, the rollout was halted. If you needed any critical updates because the car was glitchy or anything along those lines, you would need to go to a VW garage. But now, the over-the-air rollout continues in the UK, as long as you're on software version 3.0 or later. And we will discuss what all of that means in just a second. However, I can confirm it is working. I got this car on software version 3.1 a few months ago, and I did have some initial updates, but these were only for the user manual and for some of the little components inside of the infotainment system. But in the meantime, it has actually had one of those big updates as well, which moved it from 3.1 to ID Software 3.2, adding some important features and squashing some bugs. In case you don't know, to check what software version you are on, you just need to sign into the infotainment system. And there are multiple ways of going about this. The easiest one is to go into all of your apps and locate the ID Software one, and it will probably take a while. But after about 10-15 seconds, it should show you exactly the version you are on in simple language. I'm saying simple language because if you want to learn more, you can also go into the ID shop. And to do that, I need to start the vehicle. So I will just put my foot on the brake, which will turn on the engine. And once that loads up, we can go into settings and scroll all the way down to information. And it shows you a slightly different software version so the ID shop is actually independent from the rest of the infotainment system. So definitely don't go by what this says. And lastly, if you want even more details, if you're a super nerd, you can go into the main settings menu and all the way at the bottom again, you have got system information. And that will give you the exact details of the setup on board the vehicle. However, here it's important to mention that the software version of the individual ECUs or the kind of subcontrollers within the vehicle, which there are probably hundreds of in total, may not always be in sync with the big ID 3. whatever software version. So just keep that in mind. And now that you are in this screen, you probably think, well, let's just go to show all updates and that's it. Well, not quite. There used to be a drop down here for selecting different updates between the infotainment, navigation data and so on, but that's all grayed out now and I've never seen this submenu actually work properly. So, what you will need to do is slightly different. First of all, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you need to be on a recent version of the ID software. So, at least 3.0, because the previous versions, as far as I know, for now, will not be OTA updatable. The cars will probably have to be updated as part of their usual two-year service at the workshop. Secondly, you need to be in online mode. If you have your profile set up like I do here, that should be no problem. And it even shows that it was last synchronized very recently. But in case you haven't fully logged in with your VW ID, just make sure that the internet symbol is available there and you've got decent cellular connection. To enable it, you may need to go into the user settings and toggle the respective privacy settings on. Actually, having said that, you will have to log in with a VW ID because even if you have online mode enabled, the downloads do not start automatically. You need to accept additional terms and conditions specifically for the over-the-air updates on the VW online portal. And you do this on your laptop. Now, VW is very prominent about you having to do this. There is a banner at the top of the website with step-by-step -step instructions, but it's fairly intuitive. You just need to go through all of the menus, sign your solo way to VW, and then you just need to hope for the best because these updates are released in batches. So not all cars will get them at the same time. 
and they are downloaded in the background while you are, for example, driving in an area with good signal reception. This can all be done using the cellular data, so you don't have to worry about connecting your car to a Wi-Fi hotspot at home. This is a different implementation to Tesla's over-the-air updates, but you just need to wait it out. And there is no indication about whether an update is being downloaded in the background at all, so you just have to be patient, I'm afraid. Once the update is fully downloaded, you will get a pop-up notification saying that an update is available, but you won't be able to do much until you pull over and turn off the vehicle. At which point you get the usual goodbye screen, on which a new section should appear saying that there is a software update available. You can click into it to read the full release notes and what is new in said software update, and it will also give you the option to choose when the update gets installed, because depending on which version we are talking about, it may take up to a few hours for all of the updates to complete installation. And during this time, the vehicle is not drivable. There are two potential hiccups here, which I see all the time on all the ID owner forums and so on. And that's either the number one, the lights are on and the car complains about this. So, obviously, this can happen even in a situation like this, where the sun started setting and the lights are in automatic. So you just need to press the mode button on the dash and force them into the off state. Then the warning should disappear and you should be able to proceed with the installation of the update. And problem two is that sometimes you will get a message saying that all the windows need to be closed. And you go in, use the window switches, you check that all the windows are closed, including the rear ones, but nothing happens you are still not allowed to install the update. This is because the window regulators may need calibrating and to do this you simply press the window switch fully down for a few seconds until the window stops and then you repeat the process by pulling the window switch all the way up and you keep holding in the up position for about 10-15 seconds again. You may hear a very faint click. And that's it. You may need to redo this for all the windows around the vehicle to figure out which one is the troublesome one. And the car will learn the new closed positions and again should let you proceed with the updates once it does so. As the screen instructions say, once you are ready to proceed, you just get out of the car, lock it and let it do its thing for at least the few hours it requires. Once that's done, you can just unlock it and jump back in. Don't get scared because a lot of the ECUs may be updated as well or they have been disconnected in the software. During the installation procedure, there may be a sea of warning messages on the dashboard. And for example, for my car, which is the family trim, the comfort access didn't work to unlock it. So I had to use the buttons on the key fob. But once you start it, give it a minute or two, the car will give power and initialize all the control units again and any warning messages should disappear. In case that still doesn't happen, try going to drive, maybe inching forwards and backwards a little bit, back into park, get out of the car, lock it, unlock it and all should be good. After all, this is very much like a big, expensive, but ironically not very fast computer on wheels. However, let's get to the point of why you want these updates and what changes are going to be brought to your vehicle. There is a very clearly published changelog on the VW website, so I will leave it linked in the video description, but the most important one is the 2.4 update. Prior to the 2.4 software version, there were many issues with some control units not shutting down properly in the vehicle when it was locked, but the high voltage battery disconnected, meaning that they were draining the 12 volt battery excessively and this put a lot of strain on those 12 volt batteries because just like with the petrol car even though this car is fully electric you still have a low voltage network to run all the computers lights radio heated seats etc so that update has to be completed at a vw garage and that's because it's not just a software update you also get a fresh 12 volt battery free of charge and it obviously gets the car ready for the next wave of software updates. It also changed the high voltage battery heating logic so in winter especially if you're doing just lots of short trips your range shouldn't plummet as much as it used to on the previous software versions. The next big one was the 3.0 update which brought lots of features which quite frankly should have been there from quite early on like improvements to the built-in route planner in the navigation system, improved charging speeds even 
for the smaller battery versions. So for example, the peak on this particular ID3 would have gone from 100 to 120 kilowatts. Unfortunately, the 10 to 80% charging time didn't improve by much, only literally by a minute or two, I believe. But the curve is a little bit more aggressive, so you get a bigger bulk of energy lower down in the battery. So if you're road tripping, you can charge for shorter and get more range. And crucially, it's the version which enables over-the-air updates to function again properly in 2024. Then there were those 3.1 and 3.2 updates, but both were quite minor. The 3.5 is an interesting one because that one is only available as an update in the workshop. So I don't believe you will be able to get it as an over-the-air update cars which are on 3.1 or 3.2 will skip directly to the software version 3.7 which brings stuff like for example bi-directional charging on vehicles with the biggest 77 kilowatt hour battery pack but even if you have a car with a smaller battery you will get the update with the reliability and software bug fixes you just obviously won't get the vehicle to grid technology because that requires hardware which is only in vehicles with the biggest battery pack. So I think that's about it. I hope I covered everything. I wanted to make this video to cover all the things which people usually get a little bit confused about with this software update rollout. Just for the record, it is the 23rd of October, so end of October. And as you saw, my vehicle is on the 3.2 software version. So hopefully I should be able to get the 3.7 at some point in the near future. Let me know in the comments how your ID3 or ID4 is doing. Obviously, this only applies to vehicles with the older generation infotainment system. The newer ones, which have the backlit touch bar and the bigger screens, are running software versions 4 or 5. And because they have completely different hardware from a processing standpoint, they run completely different software. So I'm afraid don't get your hopes up for getting the same interface in your older vehicles. And yeah, that's really it. Thank you again for watching. If you found the video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your ID friends and the community. And I will catch you in the next one.